Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we have a special live stream uh, in our continuing coverage of the new Intel Z97 chipset. And today we are joined by our friend Leon Chen from Gigabyte. Good to see you. Thanks Good for coming by. Thanks for having me here. Uh, and he is going to talk to us about, obviously, Gigabyte Z97 motherboards. So uh, here's how the, the schedule of the day is going to go. People are watching us live. Uh, we're going to go over the different series of motherboards. We're going to do some Q&A. We have some demo, uh, some demos we're going to walk through on the system. And then we're going to give away a Z97X Gaming 3 yes. motherboard and maybe some T-shirts as well. Yeah. So if you're in the live stream, pay attention. We'll ask you that specific uh, trivia question at some point as well, so be prepared for that. It will be towards the end of the show. Stick around though, but because we're going to be asking the question about uh, to let you win the prize, but it's going to be about one of our motherboards and it's going to be talked about during the live stream. Yes, right. So we expect everybody to pay attention. Throw, throw in your answer and we'll draw a winner at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're going to walk through your new motherboard series, what right. the new features are, how they differ from the previous generation, and what the, what they've what you guys have added to them, I guess. And we're going to start with uh, the performance series, which is one of the boards that we have in front of us. What board do we actually have? Uh, this here? is actually a UD3H. Uh, this motherboard is our, like Ryan said, this is our performing ser performance series, uh, our Z97X UD3H, and we actually also have a microsite. If you guys do want to follow along uh, to some of the things uh, that we show you guys or some of the features we talk about, you can definitely check out uh, gigabyte.us and you can look at the microsites for our different series, which we're going to go over in a few minutes. Oh, okay, cool. So right now, let's jump back over to the board. So on this board, you can actually see that with our performance series this time around, we've actually moved away from the different colors. We used to have different colors on it. This time, we have a gold one. Uh, there's also something special about this board. You can also see that we've actually improved the audio performance this time around, where we've added this path lighting, this noise guard. Okay. So if you can actually see on the camera, <clears throat> see. Yeah. I, I do see it on the screen right here. There's actually like a clear, uh, it looks kind of yellowish, greenish, but it's actually a clear cutout of the board and it goes all the way through. And when you boot your system, you can actually see lights coming from it, which huh. shows that there's no um, elect, elect uh, what do you, which like interference and going any through there. interference, yeah. yeah okay. Sorry, you can see it on the back there a little bit better too. Right. So that's one of the features that we've added this time around to our performance series. So with this generation, audio and network, these are the two key features that we're picking up on. We we get a lot of feedback from users, from consumers saying, hey, you know, we need better audio, we need better internet connection, um, maybe for those gamers, for those for those YouTube streamers, you know. These are definitely features that they're all looking for. Uh, moving to the back I.O., you can see that we actually have the four USB uh, 3.0 connections as well as a full set of USB 2.0. And we also have included your legacy PS2 ports. Do you find that you have a lot of people that are still using those? There's not. It's give and take, you know. It's, yeah. it's a rough estimate. There's people who actually come to us and, you know, some gamers, they actually prefer PS2. They mm. feel that there's actually a better response time. Uh, there's some people who maybe they do overclocking or they would like to play in the BIOS. They like to use the legacy controls versus mm, okay. a USB. And this is why we've included it. It's, I mean, for us, we feel like we want to provide our consumers the most that they can get out of a board. Fair enough. It looks like you've also got uh, VGA, DVI, HDMI on this. VGA, that's kind of an odd inclusion as well. Is it kind of just in the same realm as the PS2 connection? It is, but then you have to see, like, People who actually get a performance board like this, sometimes if they don't want to upgrade right away or they're waiting for a graphics card, they right. have an old mo monitor, they have an old uh, graphics card, they want to wait for the upgrade, they want to use onboard at the time, it's a great way for them to actually save on that cost first. Okay. And definitely this is, again, flexibility for all of you guys out there. If you guys want to use uh, VGA or if you want to use DVI, if you're moving your computer to your friend's house or moving it to a different location that doesn't have a monitor with that connection, mm -hmm. that's an option for you. All right. What other features of the board kind of stand out when we look at it? So um, aside from the heat sink, uh, there are some key features on the other side of the aisle. If you guys actually look right here, we have two SATAs if you guys can see that. And mm -hmm. also next to it, there's a different connector. If, for those of you guys that aren't familiar with it, this connector is actually a SATA Express connector. So with this connector, this is next generation storage. And next generation storage, this allows you to have at least 10 gigabits per second on a transfer. Does that 
per SATA Express port or combined for the two? That would, it depends on if they're using that same lane. Okay. So dependent on how the board is laid out, this one would be per the connector. Okay, right. all right. So you can have two 10 gigabit per second storage options right. in that particular right. configuration. And not only that, we also have another new feature on it. Right here in the front, if you can actually see, yeah, right, and if you there could get go. that for me. Yep. Right here you actually see <clears throat> a similar connector you guys might be familiar with. It looks like MSATA, but it actually isn't. It's actually M.2. Now you can actually see the naming right there at the side. And then you also see the different screw holes that allow you different size chips. So this is for if you have an M.2 SSD that is, is that 42 millimeters, 60 42, and 60 80? 60 and 80. Okay. And then uh, just be That's careful, yeah. yeah, for everyone out there, if you guys, this is, again, this is next generation form, uh, form factors, next generation storage. Mm -hmm. If for you guys out there, if you guys aren't familiar with it, do some research on it. I know there's different uh, sizes with keyholes, so you can actually have different key slots in them. So oh, okay. don't go online and just say, hey, M.2, purchase the first one you see. Right, it right. might not be compatible with the motherboard. I think it's also it's also worth noting here, if we look back at the MSATA connections, or SATA, SATA Express, Express, I'm sorry, um, these are, like, they're just physically two SATA ports and right. then a, a, a secondary connection for that PCI. is used for PCI. Aye. So if you're not using SATA Express, you can still use these as SATA ports. Great, that's that's something else that we should bring up. That's yeah. definitely the case. So if you guys aren't, there's not a lot of SATA Express uh, solutions out there right now. So don't be scared saying that, oh, there's only two SATA ports. You can actually use your SATA Express backwards compatible with a regular SATA connector. Okay. What else are we looking at here? We've got, uh, looks like we've got support for SLI and Crossfire. As SLI, well, Crossfire. PCI Express configuration. Right, and also, um, this this is another feature that, uh, there's two features I want to point out. You might have seen this on our 8 series boards, but this time we just want to let everyone know we have different fan pin. Uh, we have additional fan headers okay. on our boards. So for our CPU, we actually include two fan headers. We have our main one for our CPU, and then we have another one for an optional fan. So if you're using like a water pump mm -hmm. or if you're using an air-cooled setup and your air cooler has two fans mounted on it, you have to have a way to power it and you want to designate it for the CPU, you can do it with our motherboard. Okay. Now, do with these two fan headers then, uh, are they controlled the same way, like inside the BIOS, inside software? So you can actually control in BIOS and in software. Uh, we actually have a software in our Gigabyte App Center, which we're going to show a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually our systems information viewer, and with that software, you can actually set your fan curves or even use presets that we've already programmed for you. Okay, okay, all right. And then the next thing I want to point out, you guys can definitely not see it, uh, but it is there. <laughs> we do have 15 microns of gold plating on our CPU socket, our DIMM slots, as well as the PCIe lanes. Is that enough gold for me to take out and sell in any fashion? Well, I mean, I think it's faster to just buy the gold. <laughs> okay, all right. So that's definitely one of the neat features that Gigabyte likes to add to make you know the consumers have better value right. for their. So purchase. this is this is the UD3H board, right? So Correct. obviously you have other boards in the mainstream line. What additional features, you know, as you go up or down the stack? Are, are you seeing added or subtracted? Are we looking at more SATA ports? Is it more USB 3 ports? Well, feature-wise, we actually include a lot of the features even in our high end, down in our low end. So even in our mainstream, you'll find a lot of the features that you wouldn't usually find with other manufacturers, like the audio. Hmm. You, didn't, you wouldn't see that in, from other manufacturers on their lower end because it's something that most manufacturers put on the high end. Okay. So features that you would see, you might, uh, different boards have different features. So such as our, our gaming boards or some of our other boards that are more focused on audio, you might find a USB DAC. And these features, you know, these are things that overclockers might not use, so you won't find it on an overclocking board, but right. you'll find it either on a gaming board or even a performance board. Now, something you guys introduced uh, with this generation, and I think we're, we're starting here with the with the performance line, is the idea of a black edition right. motherboard. Now, they're they're based on some of these same designs, but what is what? First of all, what SKUs do you have that are black editions, and what does it actually mean for a gigabyte board edition. to be black edition? So uh, that's a great question. For black edition, we actually carry three SKUs right now. We have one for the UD3H, the one in front of us, okay. as well as for the UD5H. That's the Z97X UD5H. 
We, um, we also have it for our high end on our G1 gaming Wi-Fi. And these would be our Black Edition motherboards. Okay. So um, for our Black Edition, there are certain key features that you'll find on these boards that you won't find on other boards. You'll find actually exclusive heat sinks. So our Black Edition heat sinks are actually very unique. They have, they would be all black. The board would be uh, set up a little bit differently, but overall, the I.O. in the back, it's the same I.O. Feature set will <clears throat> be the same from the standard to the black edition. Standard to the black edition feature sets are the same. Okay. Correct. Except for the heat sinks that would be different color okay. like you can see right here on the screen. Gotcha. So uh, not only that, what also makes the black edition special is it's actually server level tested. So we actually <laughs> test it for 168 hours. On, in our factory in Taiwan. Now, is that spot checking or are you testing every single motherboard? We're actually doing burn-in tests. So you can actually get, if you do purchase a Gigabyte Black Edition motherboard, what you do test, you get, you'll get a certificate saying that your board has actually passed uh, seven day testing, which is 168 hours, hmm. and it'll actually be signed by you know, our vice president and as well as the factory manager. I also think you guys get a, it's a longer warranty. It's a longer warranty, right. So um, that we'll also touch on in a bit. If you actually do get a Black Edition motherboard, you can register online and you can be one of Gigabyte's Black Edition membership, members club. So you can actually be a, a member. All of our Gigabyte motherboards come with a three-year warranty. Mm -hmm. And with the registration, you're, you get an additional two years. So you're looking at a total okay. five-year warranty. So what, what in that 168-hour period, what kind of testing is happening? Like, and and what, is, what is the goal of it? Is, it? is it to weed out any potentially RMA, like potential RMAs in the future? Like, so you have a better chance of getting a 100% stable product? Well, it's definitely stress testing. It's actually our way to prove that all of our motherboards are ultra durable. Our motherboards are built to last, you know. And with the stress testing, we prove that because we do we do different tests. We do GPU tests. We do um, we do mining tests. We do different right. tests that will actually stress the components to to for long durations of time. Yeah, I mean, 168 hours of running each board for seven days is a significant amount of time. Right. Like, and we don't really do that with even our production systems here so and that's another thing because it takes so much time there's actually limited quantities so okay. uh, every week we're able to do about 3,000 boards but that's worldwide so you have to look at it in so it's a, we're a actually looking scale. at like a physical spacing limit like you only have 3,000 stations right. to test each week okay all right interesting so we do have that for the black edition um, on our high end our black edition actually has uh, water barbs, barbs on it, so you mm. can actually do um, your own custom water cooling. That you have screw-in barbs that actually allow you to do different fittings. Oh, okay, so the barbs aren't pre-installed on it. They are not pre-installed this time around. They're allowed. Okay. They're more flexibility. We got feedback from a lot of users, so uh, we love to hear feedback. And I tell everyone every time we do some videos, you know, leave some comments below. Yeah. Leave some comments on the Gigabyte USA Facebook page. Let us know what you want to see in our products, and that way we're able to tell our manufacturer back in Taiwan, our own manufacturer, right. our, our own R&D team to actually, you know, these, this is what the U.S. market's looking at. Now, I know one question we already have in from the chat room is going to ask, how many Bitcoins are you guys mining <laughs> while doing the stress testing? We are actually not mining Bitcoins, and um, the stress test, sometimes they do different stress programs. Yeah. Sometimes uh, they were discussing about maybe using Litecoin mining because yeah. that's one of the crazes now. Um, what is it? Digital currency. Right. So, I mean, Bitcoin is definitely something that were, was in talks, but right now they said they might be using Litecoin or something else just to do the mining, just to show that the system can handle that. Do you get all the Litecoins that are mined? Is that I wish I did. Your account? No. no. <laughs> oh, okay. It would have been a nice side benefit of all it of would have When been. you've got 3,000 systems that you can just burn in and run all the time, right? So, okay. Uh, is there anything else you want to touch on on the performance side, or do you want to... Well, we could bring out some of the other boards. If you guys do have questions, leave it for the end or send some questions in to Ryan over here, yeah. and then we'll talk about it if you do have a question on the performance motherboards or any of the other motherboards we cover. We have, we have some staff guys in the chat room. Uh, for those of you watching the live stream, if you have your question, ask it in there. They're kind of filtering them out, and uh, they will bring them to us in a more concise manner. So let's go ahead, and we want to move over to uh, like an OC board. Yeah, let's, let's move over try over talking board. for everyone. So let's go ahead and uh, make this change over, and we'll move from the gold board to the orange board. 
So what are we looking at here? What board do we have in front of us now? So this is our SOC Force. Uh, this is actually a great board for overclocking. As you can see on the screen behind us, this is our microsite for overclocking. So if you do want to learn more about overclocking, you can check out the site. Uh, we also have some people in forums talking about it. We have um, some OC videos up as well. And we usually throw in some OC events every now and then, cool. and then you can check those out. Um, overall, overclocking motherboard. You can see that we're sticking with the black and orange. We've done that for several years now for our overclocking boards. I'm a fan of that color scheme. Great. Um, off the bat, you can definitely tell that there is something different about the board. Up at the top right here, there's some buttons allow that allow you to actually overclock. <laughs> there are the quite a few buttons. There's quite a few buttons, and we're going to go through them right now. Uh, so you actually see from the left to the right, you see the debug LED. Yep. We have a uh, CMOS reset switch. We have a direct to bio switch. We have um, memory safe. And we also have another button that is that allows, what is that, trigger switch is uh, settings yeah. lock. So oh, okay. uh, there's memory safe and settings lock, sorry. Um, there's also a bio switch as well as a trigger switch. And then there is also a what is this one? This is a bio, yeah, the bio switch and the CMOS reset. Okay. It's a lot of buttons to be laid. A lot of right buttons. Yeah. Uh, so basically, the first one, this one actually, this allows, this is our reset button. So we have the power and the reset right here. Okay. And then moving over, we have a, this is our direct to BIOS. So if you're actually a user that often goes into the BIOS and you really do not like playing Space Invaders on your keyboard, this button is perfect for you. We also have a Windows solution for going into BIOS, which we can show everyone okay. a little bit later. So basically, if you're, if you're working on an open test bed, you hit that button and it will boot straight into Right the into the BIOS the okay. next time. Uh, we have Memory Safe. Basically allows you to, if you're having issues booting your system, Memory Safe allows you to downclock your memory to the best speeds to actually allow you to boot. So okay. if, let's say, I have a 3200 over uh, XMP memory, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's not booting for some reason, that would be the button you want to push to boot at maybe a 1600 level. OK, OK. OK. The next one over is Settings Lock. For overclockers, this one you guys might have used once or twice. You are overclocking, and all of a sudden your system does not boot but you want your previous settings, that would be the button to push as that will enable you to go into your last known settings. All right. Next one over. These two are your BIOS switches. So there's two things. Uh, Gigabyte is very well known for our dual BIOS. You can actually switch between the BIOS, and even now we've actually added one which allows you to disable the dual BIOS. So sometimes you'll run you say, in... Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? That's a good yeah. question. Because <laughs> when you're actually overclocking, you might corrupt your main BIOS. And what we've done uh, in the past as uh, implementation to make it more convenient for users is we've actually allowed our secondary BIOS to rewrite itself over onto the main BIOS if it realizes there's actually some corruption in it. Okay. So to prevent that from happening and rewriting all of your information, you can disable it and actually allow yourself to actually go back in and change the settings that you mm. want. Okay. 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 We also have the trigger switch, which allows you to actually tune down the the system clocks until you're ready to do your test, your test bench, your benchmark test, right, and then right. you can actually flip the switch, get your benchmark score all the way up, and then tone it down. A so day. to be clear, like that switch is if you are running on an open test bed, maybe you're doing LN2 overclocking or something like that, right? You you flip that back and it's going down into low 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 frequency settings, right. low memory settings, low voltage settings, and you can set everything you want in the BIOS, and then. When you're ready to, okay, Start. you've got the temperature where you need right. it, you've got the software up and running, you're ready to run the test, you flip that switch and it automatically engages all those settings that you had Correct. previously? Okay. Yeah, that's, okay. That, and that's very useful for a lot of, you know, uh, overclockers trying to chase world records. These right. are definitely right. some of the tools that you need to actually get your name out there. So this is a good board to check out. Uh, you also see some plus minus switches. Got a ton of these up, yeah, these so, larger buttons right here. So I have base clock and I also have uh, uh, the memory, multi the, sorry, the multiplier. So I also have base clock and multiplier and you can actually just do it directly on the board and this will act live directly into the BIOS. Okay. So you actually don't have to go change any settings, you can just click these. These take uh, 100 megahertz steps and if you actually want to drop down a step, you can actually do hit the gear button and you can step in maybe 10 megahertz. Oh, OK. So you can take right. smaller steps or larger steps depending on uh, where you're trying to get to. Gotcha. Uh, 
And then moving over, we have a turbo mode, which is just an auto overclock for you. Okay. We have a tag button, which allows you to switch over to your favorite preset that you've already defined in your BIOS. So even when you're doing some overclocking and you, you're saying, you know, I'm done, I want to take a break, I want to play my games, you want right. to go to your regular mode, you just hit that tag button and you'll jump right into it. Okay. And that saves you the time of having to go back into the BIOS, yeah. switch over to yeah. your profiles. Yeah. And then the last one down there is a lightning bolt. A lightning bolt. So it gives your board magical powers. Sweet. So just I'm like Harry that. Potter, you know, <laughs> lightning bolt. But uh, no, actually, this, this button is our OC ignition. So for a lot of users, this is good for, you know, if you don't want your overclocking your cooling pot to actually condense, you have mm -hmm. a fan running, or you don't want to be turning your system on and off, you want to do water cooling, you want to test your connectors, this is a good button to use. So this basically enables auxiliary power through all the motherboard fan headers and... Fan headers, uh, your, your fan headers, your hard drive, all of these things will keep spinning. But the system doesn't start up. The CPU will not start up. The system won't start up, but you'll actually have power through your PCIe. You'll have power through your DRAM, everything. So anything that even had LED lights on it would yes, light up at that Yes, it'll still point. light up. Okay. And this helps so the, to actually retain IRAM memory. So if you do okay. have anything on the PCI, PCIe that actually needs that kind of power, then that's a good thing. And then, yeah, okay. So the idea for LN2 overclockers is you can keep fans running yes. even though the system is and on. And even, uh, so demo systems, if you're a case modder, you want to show off your case when your friends come. Right. You know, you can just leave that on, turn your system off. Hmm. The fans will be okay. running. It's a good demo just to show off. And it's something nice to have. That's cool. All right, well, that's one tiny little quarter of this motherboard. What else is on this that stands out? So another thing that you guys might not notice, again, this is we have 15 micron gold across the board on the connectors, so the CPU, the DIMM slots, and also the PCIe. But there's something else that you guys might not notice as well. We, this time around, we actually did our, our RAM slots a little bit differently. We, as you can see on the back uh, from this board, you can actually grab the UD3H, we can sure. show everyone. And this is a good, good thing for overclocking. You can actually see the difference where this side, it's more smooth than this. Yeah, this is what I'm used to seeing on the back of, of motherboard DIMM slots. So this is, this is basically because uh, we did the RAM slots a little bit differently this time around. And this gives you better overclocking scores for your DRAM. Is, is, it, is it improving latency? I mean, what, it allow you to do it's more aggressive It's improving the connect, connection. The, okay. the signaling is a lot stronger. It's a lot better for overclockers to use or anyone. If it, This doesn't exactly have to be an overclocking motherboard, right. but it just sure. has features for overclockers. Right. So that's definitely one thing that uh, a lot of people will be looking at. Hmm. This is a good option to have if you, know, you want fast DRAM. You're always overclocking that up to 3200 or more. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, the next thing that ties into this is we've you can actually see there's an additional two sets there's two these. sets of dip switches here yep. now. I thought I thought motherboards were done with dip switches. What do <laughs> these do now? So we Let's have one here. dip switch here that allows us uh, with our previous generation that allowed us to actually disable whichever PCIe slot that we needed. Right, I remember that. Uh, yeah. And that was for graphics card. If you're doing four-way graphics, you want to troubleshoot, or if you want to go from a four-way to a two-way to just to see maybe your friend has some issues, you want to help them troubleshoot, you want to see how come it's not responding the way that they have it, you can do that by disabling it by just flipping a dip switch. Now you have an extra set. This set is actually for our RAM. So uh, for people who actually have, maybe they have a very custom setup, they have fan coolers that aren't very convenient, and your system has been blue screening, you want to be able to evaluate the situation, you can use this to actually disable your RAM or even disable all three and just use one RAM. So this is a physical on-off switch for? For the RAM slots. Wow, okay, interesting. All right. So again, that's something else that a lot of overclockers will probably be using, you know. Yeah. Um, or even then, like I said, custom custom cooling. I know my friend used to have one. He had these RAM slots. He put four DIMMs in and he had to put this fan cooler on that it was just a pain in the butt to yeah. actually get on. And to take those out, it's, it just makes it a lot easier. Okay, makes sense. Now, <clears throat> looking at the storage side of things, what, what is, what, there are USB ports on right. this. So this is actually a feature that we like to call OC Connect. And for a lot of uh, users who actually use it on an open test bench, sometimes the board is actually facing the other way from you. So you can actually see, like uh, for my, if I was doing a setup, I would have the board facing this way. So you can just switch. 
Yeah. I would have the, oh, okay. I would yeah. have the board facing this way, and for me to actually stick that USB in on the other side is actually quite difficult. So instead, if I have it in the front, I can actually just stick it in right there. So those are just wired as normal USB ports. Normal USB. These USB 2.0. 2.0, and it's yeah. good just to you know transfer BIOSes. If you want to do BIOS transfers, you want to flash the BIOS, or if you want to pull out scores or any you know small files. Connect an ex connect a different keyboard or something. Connect a different yeah. keyboard. Okay. There's there's a lot of uses you can use for it. if you actually have it in a case. You want to do a Wi-Fi, but you want to have a clean install. You can maybe do like a USB Wi-Fi, and mm. you can connect it on the inside. Or if you want to do lighting. This is also a good way because there's a lot of USB lights outside, so you right. can actually put it in the case, run your wires behind the board, and yeah. maybe get some orange lights, and you won't see any of the wiring on the Neat. outside. Okay. And we still have uh, one SATA Express option there, yep. and then you've got uh, five standard or six SATA ports. Six SATA ports still. In addition. Okay. Right. All right. And then if you look at the rear I.O., again, we're still, we still have the solution for the D-Sub. We still have the DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort. And then it's full with USBs as well as a PS2. Still have that PS2. Right. Okay. It's still. I still see it's got the uh, audio. Right. And, advanced and audio again, in there this too, is so, yeah. one of the features that you you've seen in our high-end boards that we've actually trickled down into our mainstream as well as our other series, just to give consumers you know more bang for their buck. And this is something we're trying to achieve this time around with our nine series, like with the Legacy. Right. You've asked me about it, and you know. Okay, if I don't put the legacy, there's nothing else I can really put. So should I just take it away or should I just put it there so users have that convenience? Okay. I see a lot of PCI Express slots on this. It, it, does this support four-way graphics? It does do four-way graphics, so we're looking at probably Crossfire. Um, this can do the four-way Crossfire. That's why we have the dim, dip switches to actually allow you to disable those. Okay. Those features. Now, does this have, uh, is it doing 8888-4444? What's the PCI Express configuration? This, this one board? is probably, it should be doing 4444. Okay. And this is the, just the SOC This is the force. SOC force. Okay. And we also have another one that's the Z97X SOC. Okay. Okay. Yes. So anything else stand out on this board? I see we've got, you've got additional power. Uh, additional power. Um, we have our OC peg, which on our previous generation, you saw as a SATA connector. Mm -hmm. This basically, it's an auxiliary power that allows you to actually stabilize your power source. So you have, it, it's for the graphics cards. So you actually have a more stable power source if you're doing any overclocking or just an auxiliary power just to boost the systems. Okay. All right. Very cool. Let's uh, jump into the gaming series yeah. of boards Let's we have Let's do here. gaming series. Let's do that. Uh, grab this one over here. Okay. Now this is, it's a micro ATX motherboard. It is. But you have gaming, obviously, we, in we all sizes. We have gaming in all shapes and sizes. This is a micro. Uh, as you know, with 9 Series just launching, we do have a limited supply at this point. So, sure. I mean, everyone's trying to scramble to get there. And we wanted to bring your viewers, you know, at least some gaming to see. Right. Uh, we've done gaming in, we've done other gaming videos, but we want to let you guys see, you know, different varieties. Okay. So I already see excitement in the chat room actually for micro ATX motherboard. So it seems that uh, this is a form factor that a lot of people are still very attached to. They much, they desperately want to see implementations of. So what's unique about this board here? Okay. So again, like you did say, this is a micro ATX. Uh, just to give everyone a background of what has changed with our gaming. With our gaming this time around, we've actually done a lot of rebranding. So you can actually see uh, this logo right here in front of you guys. Ah, uh, yes, there it is. This is one of the logos. Also, the logo on the screen now. If you want to jump over to our gaming micro site, you can actually find some information on our gaming boards as well as our Black Edition motherboards. Uh, but let's get back to this board really quick. Uh, the first things first, you can tell the size is definitely the first thing we're going to notice. Right. It's a micro ATX. Uh, the heat sinks, the color. We've gone away with the green, and now we're with red. So we have red and black. What we've This is one of the feedback we've got from a lot of people. And like I said earlier, audio and network is a big thing for us this yeah. time around. See the amp up audio here? So amp up audio, that's the first thing. We're also using op amps. We still have our interchangeable op amps. So if you're actually yeah. a big audio file, you know what an op amp is. Uh, for those of you that don't know, an op amp is an operational amplifier. And these amplifiers can actually change the sound characteristics that you play from your system. Okay. So if you're listening to more techno 
techno-y or、um, EDM, if you're listening to classical rock, you can actually find different audio amplifiers that will actually fit in there, and it'll actually give you better sound quality for those、uh, hmm. those genres of music. Interesting. Okay. So、um, moving on, let's if we can just jump to the back I/O really quick. So you can actually see. Oh, over here on the side.、Oh, there we go. That's right. For the back I/O, we do again. We do have the DVI, the D sub, as well as the HDMI. But aside from that, we have the USB 3.0s and then some USB 2.0s, but in yellow.、Mm -hmm. And most people haven't really seen yellow.、Um, with the yellow, this is actually a feature that we would like to call DAC up. And the DAC is a digital analog converter.、Mm -hmm. So, for people who actually are audiophiles, who actually do have their own external、uh, DAC or some type of converter to convert out, this is a good good option for you because these DACs actually have their own power source. So it doesn't oh, fluctuate okay. as much as、uh, as much as you would see in、so、a regular USB. So these these particular USB ports have an individual power source. Correct. Okay, separate from that. So if you can actually see on the monitor right here, this is actually what we're getting with our USB DAC up.、Uh, you can see the solid clean power source、uh, with a regular USB power. You have a lot of fluctuation. You have、uh, a wider range and margin for、okay. the USB power. And with the USB DACs, you're also able to disable the power directly from there and get data straight out of it. Oh. Okay. So any external power DAC, if、uh, if you guys have like you know a switch or something like that, and it's pulling data only, and it has its own 12 volt power that goes into a wall outlet,、right. you can actually disable the power and you don't have to worry about noise. You don't、really、have to、all. worry about electrical interference. Okay. Right. Nice.、Uh, you've got lots of PCI Express slots on here. Does this support? It looks、two. like a, I see SLI two. and Crossfire、right. on here in two、right. way. Okay. So it'd be two way graphics.、Uh, Definitely full of USB 3.0s.、Uh, it has that connection. We have the next generation form factors again: SATA Express M.2,、yeah. SATA Express here, one there, and then you've got the M.2 again with the 42, 60, and 80 millimeter. So the three different sizes there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. And、um, we don't have. I know you. You said you have gaming boards in all shapes and sizes, and we don't have the Mini ITX of Gaming board, but we do have a Mini ITX. We do have a Mini ITX. This is our Z97 and Wi-Fi. Now I brought this for you guys just to see that you know we're not new into the small form factor or Mini ITX market. So if you guys haven't seen this before, we do have it in different chipsets:、uh, Z97N, H97, and Wi-Fi. These are all of our Mini ITX. But this time around, we're actually doing something with our gaming. We actually have a gaming motherboard, a Z97 and Gaming 5. Hmm. And it's a small form factor motherboard that allows、uh, users who actually go to LAN events, LAN parties, to actually create a powerful system, but in a smaller casing. Cool. So this this is one that it will be for sale as well, though, right? No, this is not a gaming board. This is a this is not this one、series. is not this is a this is a mainstream performance series.、Uh, the gaming one will be for sale. This one will be too, and these can all be found online at your retailers, e-tailers,、uh, any of those that actually. Support or that are an authorized to、uh, Ethernet connections there. If you want to use it as a storage controller or teaming, teaming, or you could use it as a router. If people still do that router,、Very、and、cool. we also have included the wireless. Yep, and it comes with wireless AC. So with all these motherboards kind of laid out in front of us now, in terms of what they have, where where do we fit in terms of like pricing in the stack? If we go from the performance series to the OC series to the gaming series. What kind of range are we talking about through your lineup as it exists well, today? Well, right now in our lineup, we've actually with our nine series, we we want to be more accommodating to all the users out there. Gamers aren't exactly you know able to spend millions of dollars on a system. You know, no. the, the, well, even thousands. You know, most gamers they they spend about seven hundred. They're budget gamers sometimes. Sure. So we definitely do have some boards here、um, in our series and lineup that that's meant to accommodate them. So, such as our、um, our Z97X SLI, it's a board. It's a board that's good for gaming. It's an all-around performer, but it's meant for gamers who want to do SLI, who want to do Crossfire, right? Who want to do two-way graphics, and that's all they want to do. And it supports next-generation、uh, storage options. It supports all the connectors you need. It can take an i7, and <clears throat> in that sense, our our price range definitely depends on the buyer. 
on the consumer who right. actually wants it. Right. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, so I, I think that's it, it's a, a good lineup of products that you guys have. And obviously, you know, we had four or five example motherboards up here. You have a lot more than that in the Z. We do have a lot. Um, so back to pricing again. You can see prices. Uh, I mean, from our high end, from our black edition, in the three hundreds. You can come down. You might find some in the one hundreds to two hundreds, depending on the promotions that are going on. Right. But sure. you know, those are the ranges that we have. And this time around, we did try to keep it as accommodating as possible for all the budget users out there. Uh, for the black series, what is the kind of price difference between the black edition of Say the the gaming one Wi-Fi, or the UD three H or the UD five H. Yeah, like what what's the what's the cost difference in those? Well, the cost difference, uh, and this is what we've seen on a global scale. Uh, this time we priced our Black Edition motherboards ten dollars above what we would find with our okay. regular performance series. And I mean, you definitely do get a lot of value out of it. Uh, like we did say earlier, you get the 168 hours of testing, you get the certification, you get the additional two years of warranty, which make it five years total, yeah. and, and exclusive black heat sinks that you wouldn't be able to find on other boards. I think, I think a lot of gamers and just DIYers in general would pay $10 to know that their motherboard has been taken out of the box, run for 168 hours before it was shipped to them, right? Just right. that additional comfort of, well, I'm not going to have to worry about an RMA or less likely to worry about an RMA or any kind of issues Well, I mean, overall with RMA, all of our boards are very durable. We don't actually see a lot of RMAs with our boards, but I'm not saying that there aren't going to be any, right. but when we do see it, you know, we try to handle it as quickly and swiftly as possible for those consumers. Um, it's with the black edition, we're just showing the world saying, hey, you know, these are our motherboards. They're durable enough to go through this type of testing. Gotcha. But you can definitely get the same type of performance with our regular mainstream boards as well. Gotcha. All right, uh, we're going to take a uh, quick break here as we change around a couple of cameras. But don't leave. We have, obviously, our giveaway that we have planned, and we're also going to go through the actual demos uh, with that SLI motherboard. With the SLI actually. motherboard that we've actually set up for everyone here. Yep, so hang on one second, guys. We'll be right back.